Let's see who's turned up in accident and emergency. And watch out for a gross alert. <laughs> <laughs> Today, waiting in Alder Hayes A&E with his mum is 10-year-old Casper with a troubled tibia. I broke my leg about a year ago, but recently it's just got really sore. This morning it got worse and I ended up here. Looks like that leg's in limbo. How did it happen? One year ago, it was a beautiful sunny day. Beautiful. Birds were tweeting. Tweet, tweet. Flowers were... Dancing. Uh, yes, OK. And Casper was playing in the garden with his friend Magna. Ooh, what were they playing? They were running around blasting foam darts. Pow, pow, pow! Sounds like fun. It was, until Casper tripped over a tree root and broke his leg. Ouch! A year later, and that leg is still causing problems. And now it's started spraying out yellow stuff and now white chunks of gravelly stuff. That's no laughing matter, Casper. Best get that grim limb in to see Dr. Ashok Lal Ramavan. So we need to examine the wound and see how it is. It looks horrendous. That's right, Mum. Gross alert coming up. When Casper first broke his leg, he had an operation. And doctors discovered he had a tumour which they removed. Can you wiggle your toes for me? To strengthen his leg bone, they inserted a metal plate. What, like this? Yep, that's the one. And Casper was also given a bone graft. A bone graft is a surgical procedure when bones need repairing or rebuilding. A very special material, a bit like moulding clay, is put into the bone. It holds the bone in place like scaffolding and encourages new bone cells to grow. Sometimes, like in Casper's case, the material can leak. It's nothing to be overly concerned about, but there could be an infection. So the doctor orders bloods to be taken... One, two, three, go. ..and x-rays. OK, brilliant, that's great. We're all finished. If there is an infection, Casper may have to have surgery to sort it out. We're going to keep him in tonight to see how things fold up tomorrow morning. For now, casper has got other things on his mind. Dinner and sleep. My thoughts exactly. Not yet, Zand. Find out later if he does need surgery. <laughs> Back to accident and emergency for another curious case. Arriving at Alderhay with her dad is football fanatic Lily. I play for two teams. Two teams? Zand couldn't even get into one. Oi! What's with the sling? Lily was playing a cup game for her local footy club. As always, she was on top form. She shoots and she scores! But the goalkeeper hadn't turned up, so Lily went in goal. The match ended 2-2 and it went to penalties. It's a tense game, Chris. It's going right to the wire. The opposition were ready to take their first penalty. It's a high shot to the top left corner. Lily reached to save it. When all of a sudden, the ball bent her hand backwards. Ouch! Ooh, Lily, why not try something safer like a crossword? I football a lot. Are you sure? Even more than crosswords? A lot, a lot. OK, I believe you. Emergency nurse practitioner Nicola Evans is here to get you back on the ball. So we're just going to have a little feel. Nurse Nicola examines Lily's arm to explore the twist in her wrist. What about when we lift it up? A bit on that side. OK, to the side. There. Right. With Lily in pain, she's sent straight to X-ray. That's how I've done, Lily. So that's your X-ray. Oh. We've got a little crack there. She's broken her radius, which is the big bone in her wrist. Uh-oh, it's a red card for Lily's radius. So you won't be playing in the school final? Mm. No. Oh, no. Lily will be on the bench for a while. Time for a temporary cast so the swelling can go down. But there's only one thing on Lily's mind. I'm going to miss the final now. <laughs> you your arm's going to get better. Wise words, Dad. She'll be back on the football pitch before she knows it. Bye, Bye Lily! <laughs> Waiting in the emergency department with her mum is 14-year-old Carmen. My jaw is dislocated again. Hang on, she looks familiar. Yeah, I was on Operation Alex last year. Ah, oh, I thought I recognised you. And it's happened again? It's happened about 50 times now. Did Carmen say 50? Wow. So what happened this time? Carmen was in dance rehearsal for the end of the year school show. Ooh, was she tap dancing? No, it was a big Beyonce number. I love Beyonce. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. What? Very tuneful, Zand. Oh, thanks, Chris. Anyway, Carmen was really busting some moves. 
but when the class finished, her face felt funny. She looked in the mirror and saw her jaw had dislocated again. Ouch! Sometimes I'm able to get it back in by pulling my jaw down myself. Well, now you're here, let's get a professional to take a look. Meet Dr Naomi Simmons, who's going to check out those chops. Can you open your jaw at all at the moment? Well, it's the temporomandibular joint which dislocates in the jaw, which is right up here. Inside your head are 20 bones which make up the skull. Two of them are in your jaw. There's the mandible, which is one of the strongest bones in the body, and the maxilla. They're linked together by a hinge, which allows you to open and close your mouth. And this time, Carmen's right hinge has become unhinged. So, I'm going to pop and get some Entenox. The Entenox is laughing gas, so it'll help relax my jaw. I'm getting quite an expert on this now. Yes, you are. Dr Naomi brings in the Entenox to our expert. She also brings in tongue depressors that she'll use to straighten that sore jaw. But once the Entenox kicks in, Carmen has other ideas. Try, like... <laughs> because this has happened so many times, Carmen's mum has become really good at popping it back. She uses the tongue depressors to help ease Carmen's jaw back to where it should be. Is it back in place? Uh-huh. Is that right? I think it is. Well, it looks right to me. Let's ask our expert. Uh, yeah, it's back in place now. She can talk. <laughs> good work, Mum. You know the score from here, really, don't you? Try to remember not to have any big movements of your jaw. Um... No more Beyonce boogieing for you, Carmen. I think I'm going to go back to dance right now. <laughs> Stop even dancing, can we? Bye! <laughs> you remember this guy, Casper? He came into the emergency department after tripping over a tree stump a year ago. Casper had an operation to fix a hole in his bone. Now, your bones are a totally unique material. There's nothing else quite like them, and so you need really special stuff to fix them. And today, we're going to find out how that special stuff is made. Come on, you lot. This is Imperial College in London, and scientists here are working on incredible new medical treatments. Professor Julian Jones is working on new ways to fix our bones. And it all starts with this, a piece of glass. I would have thought that glass would be the very worst thing in the world to repair bones with. It's brittle, it chips, it's sharp, it's not very strong. So either you're crazy or you can explain how it works. Yes, that is glass, but it also is a special glass called bioglass, and it has special powers. If a surgeon takes that and puts it into the body, it will form a very tight bond to bone. And it also tells the cells in the bone to get active and produce more. So the glass actually talks to your bones, your broken bones, and says, needs mending over here. Absolutely. Wow. Bone can heal itself really well, but sometimes with a big hole, it needs some help. Bioglass can do this by bridging the gap and giving the body's own cells something to hang on to and make new bone. Bioglass is made from the same raw materials as window glass, except it's got lots more calcium, which is good for bones. Well, I think we need to see some glass get made, don't you? To make bioglass, the raw materials are measured and weighed and then mixed together before being superheated in a special furnace to 1,400 degrees centigrade. This turns the solid sand into a molten hot liquid. Oh, wow. And that is very, very hot. That is amazing. So in here now, this pile of sort of white rubble, that's bioglass. Yep, it's been quickly frozen into place by the water. This brand new bioglass. It's then dried, sterilised and ground down into a very fine powder ready to be used as bone fixing material. So what the surgeon would do is take some blood from the wound and then just apply it, a little bit of it, to the glass and then sort of make a putty. All those proteins and cells in the blood will, will clump the grains of glass together, so it ends up like, like putty, like chewing gum almost. Yeah, and then the surgeon will just press it into the hole in the bone, and then over a few weeks, months, the bone will repair. So if your research goes according to plan, in my lifetime, I will see dramatic changes in the way we can treat people's bones. Absolutely. Professor Julian is also working on a type of bioglass that can be printed. Its specially designed shape means bones could heal even better. And he's developed a bouncing bioglass. This is glass but it doesn't break, it bounces. Yep. 
Unbreakable glass. Amazing. This could replace cartilage, the stuff between your joints. Bioglass is amazing stuff, and it's in hospitals right now, helping patients like Casper who need their bones fixed. And the best news is, scientists are working on even more applications for this amazing stuff. Thanks, Glass. Over in accident and emergency, 10-year-old Isabel is with her mum and dad. What's happened? I've hurt my wrist slash arm. Well, how did you do that? The sun was shining and Isabel was playing in her garden on the trampoline. And who's that over there? Ah, oh, that's Sven the guinea pig. It marked happening. And Benji the bunny. Whoa, dude, cool moves. Isabel was having a whale of a time. She has a whale too? Yippee! No, Zant, she was having loads of fun until she lost her footing and landed on her arm. Ouch! Meet Mr. Assad Qureshi. And your qualifications? BSc, MBBS, MRCS, MSc, and soon to be PhD. <laughs> what a smarty pants. You're in safe hands, Isabel. Do they feel OK or do they feel tingly? Some ones feel tingly. So these two? Yeah. But these ones feel normal? Yeah. Isabel's struggling to move her third and little fingers. Plus, there's a wound on her arm. Time to get into X-ray and see what's going on. That's perfect. Whoa! That's quite a break. Let's see a close-up. It's a double break. This fracture is significantly displaced, which is why we need to proceed with an operation to fix it. One of the broken bones also pushed through Isabel's skin, which leaves her open to infection. We need to give you some antibiotics and we need to do an operation. So we're just going to pop this on, OK? Isabel's op is booked for first thing in the morning, so she needs a temporary cast to make her more comfortable. And she'll stay overnight in hospital. Night-night operation out. Night-night! Find out how Isabel's operation goes later on. <laughs> Earlier, Isabel came into the emergency department with a double break in her arm. Isabel was jumping on her trampoline under the watchful eye of Sven the guinea pig and Benji the bunny. Unfortunately, she slipped and landed on her arm. Ouch! X-rays revealed that Isabel needs surgery. She's been given an anaesthetic, so she'll be asleep for the operation and won't feel any pain. Surgeon Jim Browsell is a man with a plan. First on the list is giving Isabel's arm a good scrub. Here comes a gross alert. Even the inside of her arm needs a good wash. Next step is to realign her broken bones, and this is the really clever bit. We're going to fix them by passing wires down the middle of the bones uh, so that they line up and they'll heal properly. This is a flexible nail. It's a long piece of bendy wire. Gross alert time! Dr James puts the flexible nail into the middle of Isabel's radius bone. He then pushes it down through the break to reconnect the two halves of the bone. Fix a bone yourself in our Snot Apocalypse game. This is then repeated with Isabel's ulna bone, bringing both bones into line. Here are the flexible nails inside Isabel's arm. Now her bones are straight and in the perfect position to heal. These nails will stay in her arm for a few months and she'll have a plaster cast for six weeks. How are you feeling, Isabel? I'm feeling a bit better. And what about that trampoline? I'm going to keep trampoline. Well, there's no arm in it, if you're careful. Not that joke again. Bye! Bye. Bye. Now, miracle things are always at the way. Sand, the sweet, please. And the other one. OK, now continue. <clears throat> Medical teams are always at the ready. Let's see who the first case in A&E is. And my sweet back? No. Six-year-old Winnie is waiting to see the doctor with her mum in the children's emergency department. Look, poor Winnie has a sling. I got so loud. Winnie walks with a walking frame, so I saw her wobble and then topple over. So that's why I'm a bit worried it might be fractured. Oh, no! How did it happen? Winnie was at her favourite after-school activity. And what's that? Well, she does lots of activities like dance, swimming, tennis, cheerleading. Wow! So she was dancing in the swimming pool with the tennis racket while cheerleading? No, Zant. 
Winnie's absolute favourite thing to do is play over at her best mate Sophie's house. Well, looks fun. Yes, but as they were playing catch in the garden, Winnie slipped on the wet grass, trapping her arm underneath her walking frame. Ouch! Oh dear! Let's hope Dr Ashley Timings Thompson can get you sorted. First, the doc checks the nerves in Winnie's arm by making sure she can feel properly. Please play a game, OK? Ooh, I love a game. What you need to do is close your eyes really tight. No peeping. And then when I touch you on your arm, just say yes. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Very good. Winnie wins. Time to check her movement. That's all. I think you might have broken a bone in your, in your elbow, OK? <laughs> so what we need to do is get an X-ray. I like having X-rays. Do you? It's like a computer above you taking a picture of inside and when you look at it, it's very interesting. Well, you're in luck today. You're getting two X-rays from different angles. Girl, you're all finished. And then it's straight to the dock for the results. Look at your X-ray. I just wonder if you've got a very small break in this part of your bone here. So what we're going to do Put your hand in what we call a collar and cuff, just to keep it steady overnight, and then we'll bring you back tomorrow to see how you're getting on. OK. Winnie needs to see an orthopaedic surgeon, a doctor who specialises in bones. Tomorrow I'm going to come back to see if I need any further treatment. OK, Winnie. We'll be back to find out how you get on. <laughs> Earlier, Winnie came into the emergency department with a sore arm. Well, let's find out how she's getting on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Now. Winnie had to have her arm put in a sling after an accident. She'd been playing catch with her friend Sophie. But she slipped and her arm was trapped underneath her walking frame. Ouch. Winnie's x-ray showed she might have a small break on her elbow. My arm is stinging. Don't worry, you're back to see an orthopaedic doctor who specialises in bones. Here's Dr Janet Cumberland. Does it hurt when I press on there? Yeah. OK. Can you straighten it out? Oh, that's fantastic. I think your arm's OK. Brilliant news! For her to be this comfortable only the next day, I'm very happy she hasn't broken anything. When they looked at the x-ray in A&E, they could see this little irregularity on the surface of the bone and they wondered if that might be a break. Lots of bones can have little bits of irregularity in them. That's just normal for the patient. Fabulous. So you can carry on doing dancing and cheerleading. Yay! Well, yes, Mum, but Winnie still needs to take care. She's damaged the soft tissue around her elbow, which can take up to six weeks to heal. I'm feeling very happy. Any advice for me and Chris when we're playing catch? Not to go on the grass when it's slippy. Got it. Bye, Winnie. <laughs> Today, waiting with his mum in the emergency department is nine-year-old Will, who's mad about motocross. I love riding my bike all the time. If someone said to quit, I'd just look at him like... Like that. You're clearly bonkers about bikes, Will, but is it a bit dangerous? In the last few months, I've had about four breakages, two collarbones, my patilla and my tibia. Crikey, what's happened this time? I bang my kneecap on a big rock. Ooh, let's find out more. Will was competing in the British Motocross Youth Championships in Oxfordshire. Chris, I'm loving all the safety gear. Yes, even down to the blue gloves. The race began. And here comes number 31, it's Will. He's coming from the back. He's moving further up the field. Chris, you're really getting into this. It's all so exciting. Will's into sixth place. Go, Will. He's accelerating hard. Oh, no, it's turned into a wheelie. The bike is out of control. Yikes. Number 31 is off his bike. He's landed knee first onto a rock. Ouch. Will went straight to the nearest hospital and had x-rays taken soon after he was injured. They said it was a broken patella. Your patella is your kneecap, in case you're wondering. So, it's off to see bone specialist Dr Janet Cumberland to find out for sure. So when I look at your x-ray, it doesn't jump out at me as being a break at the end of the kneecap. That could be good news, Zand. 
Dr Janet cuts off Will's plaster to take a closer look. Does that hurt your hip at all? No. If I do that, does that hurt? Not really. And when I pressed on the end of his kneecap, it didn't really hurt him very much. You point to where that's hurting. Here. But it did hurt him over the bruised bits. Although Dr Allison doesn't think Will's bone is broken, she's still concerned and wants to send him for some fresh x-rays. If we do the x-rays in another position, we can see if there's fluid in the knee rather than a broken bone. Find out later how Will gets on. Remember Will with his sore knee? No. Will with the sore knee? No, I don't think so. You just met him! Oh, you mean sore knee Will with his sore knee? down in the sore knee department. Let's find out how he's getting on. Why didn't you say so? Earlier in the emergency department, Will came in with his left leg in limbo. Yes, that's him. Sore knee Will. Shh, Zand, what did the doctors say? They said it was a broken patella. Will was competing in the British Motocross Youth Championships. He fell off his bike and bashed his knee on a rock. Ouch! Doctors thought Will might have broken his patella, or kneecap, so he was sent to see an orthopaedic doctor who specialises in bones. Point to where that's hurting. Here. Radiographer Andrew takes x-rays from different angles to help Dr Janet find the cause of Will's pain. That's lovely. OK, I'll finish, mate. Now it's time for the results. What I can see on the x-ray is that you've got lots of soft tissue swelling around here and you haven't got anything that suggests that you've got a broken bone inside the knee. No break is good news, but a soft tissue injury can take just as long to heal. A soft tissue injury can involve damage to muscles, ligaments and tendons around the bone. They usually come from a sprain, strain or a whack to the skin, like Will got to his knee. It can swell, bruise and be really painful. So what's the plan, Doc? So what we're going to do with you is we're going to put you in something called a range of movement brace. It will protect your leg and it will protect your knee. Great news. So Will heads off for his special leg brace. It will allow him some movement, but with support. Can I get you just to pop your fingers there for me? This will encourage his muscles to heal without further damage to the injury. So you'll find that when you start moving your leg, your knee will actually bend a little bit, but it will stop at a certain point, so it's not going to keep bending. All fixed up. What have you learned, fella? I've learned to not go as fast around corners, keep it nice and smooth with the bike. Sounds like a plan. Take care. Bye. 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 Time to head down to the... Uh, where are we going again? The emergency department. Oh, yeah. The emergency department. Now, come on, Chris. It's that way. At the emergency department in Liverpool, seven-year-old Ava is waiting with her mum. What have you hurt, Ava? Me hand. Ooh, your finger's looking swollen. How did that happen? Ava was happily jumping on her trampoline with her mate, Chloe, but it all went wrong with the crab. It was that wicked pirate, Pincers o' Crabby. O-R. Um, I'm not sure... It was. Listen up. I've had a proper thinky. I know how she hurt her pinky. No, Zond. Ava was doing fancy landings. So amazing at the old hand standing. Stop! In came the crab with his pincers no, ready. No, so crabby. Oh, all right, then. Ava went from a handstand into the crab gymnastics move, and she bent her little finger back. Ouch! You won't be doing that again in a hurry, will you? Oh, oh, oh. The dogs have sent Ava straight to X-ray to see if there's a break. Get ready for your close-up, Ava. Fantastic, Ava. That's all finished, OK? Thank you. Time to find out what the damage is. I'm <laughs> really nervous. Well, don't worry. Here's nurse Jenny Cardis. When it comes to fixing fingers, she's a dab hand. Here's Ava's X-ray. And looking at her X-ray in this view, you can see that she has a fracture to her middle phalanx of her little finger. You've got a little break to the middle bone there. So I think I'd like to get her assessed tomorrow morning, if that's OK. Yeah, the plastic surgeons will assess her and they'll decide whether or not she needs some kind of intervention and maybe surgery on it. Ava's little finger is temporarily strapped up and she'll be back to see a surgeon tomorrow. Bye, Ava. Bye. Next morning, she's back. And here's surgeon Pandreek Sama to look at this dodgy digit. We follow the edge of the bone. Boom. 
something not quite smooth. So, does Ava need an operation? I don't think everything's bent sufficiently out of shape that we need to do an operation for it. Phew! No operation needed here. But you do need a splint and cast. Any final questions? What's your favourite TV programme? Um, <clears throat> obviously Operation Outshaver. <laughs> That's the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So that's this one all wrapped up. It feels weird. Or is it? Bye. Bye. Find out later on. Ouch. Remember Ava? She had her finger fixed in the emergency department. And now she's back. Ooh, she's hurt her back. What? No, she hurt her finger. Why do you mention her back? What, she, she's back in the emergency... Let's go find out how she's getting on. Earlier, Ava came to A&E with a very painful pinky. Ava was doing gymnastics on the trampoline with her friend Chloe. She went from a handstand into a crab and she bent her little finger back. Ouch! Ava's x-rays showed it was broken, so her hand was put into a cast. Perfect. That's a job done and dusted. Not so fast. One week later, Ava's back. It really hurts the cast on. And here to help is advanced nurse practitioner Simon Minford. Let's take it off and have a look and see if it's okay. Sometimes casts are just a bit too snug, so they need to be removed. Do you know what you can do now? Itch. Wash out. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's a good job they don't have ponga vision. phew -ee. What's next, Nurse Simon? We're going to give her a bespoke plastic finger splint that will still keep her hand in a good healing position, but also not quite cramp her style too much. Sounds cool. And to show us how it's done is senior physiotherapist Joanne Moore. First, she draws around Ava's finger to make a template. And you thought you were coming to therapy, not an art class. Then Joanne takes a sheet of plastic and cuts out a small section. I need to put it in some hot water, OK? Because that will make it go nice and soft. It's going more floppy. Now it can be cut to size and finely shaped to fit Ava's hand. Yeah. Is it too hot? No, it's fine. It's OK. Awesome. Ava needs to wear this splint for a couple of weeks. And the best bit is, Ava won't have a stinky hand this time. Pongtastic! Bye, Bye, Ava! Bye! Bye. <laughs> Waiting in the emergency department with her mum is 12-year-old Jess. Look serious, Jess is inhaling gas and air. What happened? My ankle, like, twisted and it really hurts. Yep, her ankle's facing the wrong way. That looks painful. Let's find out more. The sun was shining and Jess was with her friend Kenzie. What were they doing? They were jumping. Jumping over buildings? It wasn't parkour, Zand. Oh, they could have been jumping in space. They weren't astronauts. They were jumping on two trampolines in Kenzie's garden. Oh, and did the trampolines have safety nets? Unfortunately not. Ah, oh, I think I know what's coming. Yep, safety nets might have stopped Jess and Kenzie climbing on top of a fence... Oh, no! ..and jumping onto the same trampoline at the same time. Uh-oh! ..with Jess landing awkwardly on her ankle. Ouch! What do you reckon, Jess? Dislocated, I think. Let's see if she's right. Here to jump in is Dr Tim Osborne. Can I have a look at his ankle, then? When she first came in, I could see that it was dislocated. The ankle was twisted off to the side. You can see where the bone's pressing up against the skin. We're going to have to get this ankle back into position. So we've got the gas in there going now. We'll give you some sprays up the nose. Try and get the pain under control. The nasal spray will help relieve the discomfort Jess is experiencing. Dr Tim cuts off Jess's leggings to manipulate her ankle back into position. Good girl, big deep breath. Soap yourself. All right. All right, well done. Jessica was pretty brave. She didn't complain at all. We got it back into position, she coped with it really well. Jess gets a temporary full leg cast to make sure she can't move her ankle at all while the docs assess if she's got any breaks. Off she goes for x-rays. OK, I think we're all finished, well done. Dr Tim checks out the results. When Jessica's dislocated her ankle, she's broken through the bone on the inside, which holds the ankle joint in place, and that will need an operation to fix it. Dr Tim has to break the bad news. Find out later how Jess gets on. 
Back in the emergency department, Jess needs surgery for her broken ankle. If only there was some way we could find out what they're gonna do. There is none. Come with me. Earlier in the emergency department, Jess came in with an ankle in agony. Jess and her friend Kenzie were playing on trampolines in the garden. They both climbed a fence, jumped onto a trampoline at the same time, and Jess landed awkwardly on her ankle. Ouch! What's going on, Jess? I've been here overnight and I'm waiting for my operation on my ankle. Looks like Mum's been making her a balloon buddy. Herbert the giraffe dog. All right, Herbert, smile for the camera. I just love Herbert the dog. So do I. Jess leaves Herbert behind while she has a CT scan before her surgery. This will give the doctors more detailed images of her ankle, which they will use during the operation. She heads off to theatre. And look, Herbert's gone along for the ride. In charge of the operation is consultant Mr John Cashman. First, he looks at the detailed CT scan, a 3D picture of Jess's ankle. He can see exactly where the breaks occurred. He also notices a piece of cartilage has come loose. Ooh, that needs removing too. In, in the operating theatre, we made a, a hole in the joint, we cleaned out, there were some loose fragments of bone and cartilage which we removed. Mr Cashman uses an X-ray camera to help guide him as he drills a hole. And he sticks in a screw which will hold Jess's broken ankle bone back together. With Jess sewn up and surgery over, she has a new plaster cast fitted. This will be on for four weeks. What have you learned, Jess? It's to not jump on trampolines off of fences. Good idea. And a net on that trampoline, please. Time for Jess to head home. Go on, then. Off you go. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> there she goes. Bye. Bye. Today is about cells, and I'm using this modelling clay to... Zant, what are you doing? Well, I thought I'd take the opportunity to make some new creatures for my new aquarium, since the last one didn't go so well. Well, that is an understatement. You flooded the entire lab. So we did agree, no more aquariums. Well, I didn't agree. Mm -hmm. Your body is made up of trillions of cells, and it makes new cells when old cells divide in half. This is a process called mitosis, and this happens to millions of cells around your body every second. Now, mitosis works like this. Chris, show me a new cell. Now, this cell will grow bigger and bigger while it makes a copy of all its contents, including its DNA. Then it checks everything is in order, and if it is, it splits itself in half, making two new cells. And then the cycle begins again, producing four cells, then eight cells, then 16 cells, then 32, 64, 128, then 256, then 512. Well done. I think everyone gets the idea. <laughs> This is what real mitosis looks like, sped up. Watch this cell as it splits in two. This is how lots of your body parts grow. But how do your bones get bigger? After all, they're mostly made of a mineral a bit like rock, and rocks don't divide. Zond, to understand this, we need a bone. One human bone coming up. Chris, we've got a few in here. What size are you looking for? I don't know, something about that long, a humerus, maybe? Come on out, humerus, come on, come with me, that's good. Now stand there next to Dr Chris. Right, Dr Chris, meet humerus, humerus, meet Dr Chris. Zond, this isn't humerus, this is Esther. Hi, Esther. Hi, Chris. Esther has broken her collarbone. How did you do that? My brother pushed me off a mini bike. Ouch! Is he in trouble? Yes. Good. Now, moving on from the collarbone, we can now see... The humerus, that's the arm bone. At the top of the humerus is the growth plate. It's made of a soft, squishy material, and there are cells there that produce cartilage. The cartilage then hardens up and turns into bone that's added in layers, and that is how your bones grow. Chris and my bones are not still growing, but Esther's are, and so are yours. Once you get to be an adult, your growth plates close up. Esther, thank you very much for coming into our lab and showing us your amazing arm x-ray. All right, humerus, back to the cupboard. Go on, off you go. Over in Sheffield, 12-year-old Ozair is waiting with his dad. What have you done, fella? I fell on my arm. You fell on your arm? Ooh, yikes, Chris, look at that. What happened? It was home time, and Ozair was standing on the street outside the drama classroom. Ooh, had he just come out of drama class? I wonder if he'd been acting like a tree. 
Or perhaps he'd been miming. Or learning Shakespeare. To be or not to be, that is the question. Enough of the theatrics on. As air hadn't been doing drama. My, had to not. No, he just happened to be standing outside the drama classroom. Everyone was in a rush to head home, when all of a sudden he tripped and fell on his arm. Ouch! Now that's what you call a bump. Ready to remedy a rickety wrist is consultant Sally Gibbs. Uzair is given an anaesthetic nasal spray to ease the pain. Then it's time to check the movement in his wrist and hand. Does it hurt at all across your hand? Yes. Over there? Yeah. So we need to get an X-ray looking at it. I think you've broken the bones. Get ready for your close-up, Uzair. All finished. So, consultant Sally, what's the plan? So he has definitely broken the bones in his wrist on the radius bone. That bit should be sitting on top of that part. Uh-oh. Time to tell Uzair the news. There's a break across the bone, and if you imagine the bone's like a long tube, and the, the end of it has just been knocked off, off sideways. We need to get that back in place so it can heal. Okay. I think it is going to need a little operation to put it's that right. back where it should be. Before his operation, he'll need a temporary cast to keep him comfortable. I'm just going to jack it off so we can get to his arm when we need to cast it. Oh, no. Azair's got to have his favourite coat cut off. But don't worry, everyone's going to take a photo so you don't ever forget it. How many more pictures could we have of you? Put the phone down, Dad. It's time for Azair's operation. Find out later how he gets on. <laughs> Earlier, Azair came into the emergency department with a lumpy limb. Everyone was in a rush to get home at the end of school when Azair tripped over, falling on his arm. Ouch! <laughs> X-rays revealed the radius bone in his arm was totally skew -iff. He's been given an anaesthetic, so he'll be asleep for the operation and won't feel a thing. Leading the operation is surgeon Mr Owen Evans. First, Uzair's arm is pulled in opposite directions to pop the bone back into place. Next, the bones are pinned back together. One surgeon holds Uzair's wrist in place. Here comes a gross alert. While the other drills in two pins into the middle of his radius bone. They keep the bones perfectly straight while they heal. Finally, a cast is put on. And the next morning, our patient is looking chirpy. How are you feeling, fella? Yeah, I feel well. Oh, thank goodness. And it looks like you can head home. See you later, Azair. Bye! Bye.